Hi, my name is Sarah, a behavior analyst and your behavior guide. And today we are talking about differential reinforcement. So let's get into it. Differential reinforcement is a behavioral management strategy that's often used in ABA therapy that involves reinforcing specific behaviors while withholding reinforcement for others. So there are so many different behavioral challenges that stem from individuals just trying to communicate or meet their needs. So instead of focusing on punishment, differential reinforcement really promotes behaviors that are often better alternatives and depending on the type, teaches people what to do instead or a replacement behavior. So there are so many different benefits to differential reinforcement and they include encouraging positive behavior change, minimizing punishment-based interventions, and it can help the learner develop communication, social skills, or life skills, and really promotes long-term success instead of just stopping a behavior in the moment. So first up, we're gonna talk about DRO, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Other Behavior. So how it works is DRO reinforces any other behavior than the problem behavior within a specific time frame. So if the problem behavior does not occur, reinforcement is given. If it does occur, the timer resets. So this is a really good procedure to use for a behavior that happens at a really high rate or a behavior that needs to be reduced or eliminated. So let's look at an example. So imagine a child engages in pinching behavior and pinches their sibling at a really high rate and the behavior analyst sets a criteria for 10 minutes and reinforces any other behavior if they don't pinch their sibling in that 10 minute period. So next up, we have DRA, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Alternative Behavior. So DRA is all about finding a positive replacement behavior that serves as the same function as the problem behavior. So for example, consider a child who throws objects or has a temper tantrum when frustrated or overstimulated. The child is taught to use a break card instead. So every time they request a break, they get reinforced. Another example might be having a teenage client that hugs female staff and students, making them feel uncomfortable. So instead of hugging, the teenager was taught to ask for a high five instead. So one key tip is to always make sure that the replacement behavior is something that the individual can do and the child has the skill. So next up we have DRI, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Incompatible Behavior. So how DRI works is that we reinforce a behavior that is physically incompatible with the problem behavior. So imagine a child that is constantly unbuckling their seatbelt in the car, making the car ride unsafe and putting the driver and the child in danger. So the behavior analyst provides the child with a sticker book that requires the child to use both hands to use so they are unable to unbuckle their seatbelt. Now, sometimes a behavior isn't harmful or dangerous, but it does happen too often. So that's when we use DRL, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Lower Rates. So DRL focuses on reinforcing lower frequency of behavior instead of eliminating it altogether. So for example, imagine a child who excessively washes their hands, averaging about 15 times per hour. So while hand washing is a positive behavior, the excessive amount really disrupts their daily routine and just uses a lot of water. So the behavior analyst sets a goal where the child receives reinforcement if they wash their hands at a rate of 10 times per hour. So over time, the reinforcement criteria changes and reduces to eight times to five times to eventually only when needed. So in addition to reducing the rate of a behavior, DRL aims to increase the IRT, which is the inter-response time. So imagine the time between a behavior is 20 minutes. The behavior analyst will try to stretch that time and really try to increase the time before the behavior occurs. So one important note is that DRLs should not be used for dangerous behaviors like self-injury or aggression. Okay, so these are the most common types in ABA, but we also need to know about DRD and DRH. So first up, we have DRH, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Higher Rates. So DRH focuses on reinforcing a behavior when it occurs more frequently, promoting more consistent engagement in appropriate activities. So really DRH is used when a behavior needs to occur more often for the individual's success. So for example, say a student who struggles with independent schoolwork and completes only one math problem before getting distracted or losing interest. So the teacher applies DRH by reinforcing the student when they complete two problems then four, then six, gradually increasing their focus and independence. So finally, we have DRD, which stands for Differential Reinforcement of Diminishing Rates. 
So DRD is used to gradually decrease the frequency of a behavior over time. DRD systematically reduces the behavior until it naturally fades out or reaches an appropriate level. And in some cases, it's eliminated altogether. So DRD really ensures that the behavior fades naturally rather than stopping abruptly, which can cause frustration or other unintended consequences. So for example, imagine a child that excessively flushes the toilet after they go to the bathroom, let's say 30 times in a row. So DRD will reinforce under that criteria so that if they flush 28 times, they'll be reinforced and the criteria is gradually reduced from there. So you might be thinking, this sounds a lot like DRL, right? Well, one key difference here is that yes, they are both decreasing the rates of behavior, but DRL specifically focuses on IRT as well. So that's it for the video. I hope you found this video to be helpful. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to comment below and I will try to answer them the best I can. And I will see you in the next video.